Hello and welcome back to another Hogwarts Legacy video. Today we're going to be going over uh, what I consider to be a pretty important topic, and that is the best spell loadouts or spell combinations. So, uh, as you probably know if you've par uh, played the game, you can only pair together uh, up to four spells into one loadout before you either have to start switching them out or switch your loadout. Balancing them for most combat situations is going to be extremely important. It's something that I think a lot of people screw up. I've even watched some people who streamed the game for like dozens of hours who I think have really bad spell loadouts loadouts just based on the couple you know I'm at, I'm at like 150 hours of playtime already into the game so I've I've experienced and experimented enough with them to come up with the best combinations at least in my opinion so we're going to talk about all of that today but before we do a quick word from this video sponsor the Holwick Wand Company today's video is brought to you by the Holwick Wand Company the link for which you will find in this video's description if you are a Harry Potter fan and you've always wanted to have your very own wand not a replica of a character's wand from the movies not some cheap plastic crap from a sweatshop in China but a genuine hand handmade solid wooden wand, then the Holwick Wand Company is the answer to your dreams. Every single wand is 100% custom and handmade, so no two will ever be the same. Each wand is hand carved from only the highest quality wood and guaranteed to be from the exact species as advertised. Other custom wand companies crank out the same identical designs or buy birch doubles in bulk before turning them on a lathe, but not the Holwick Wand Company. From the selection process by their master forester to the crafting process of their master wand maker, every step is completed with diligent and loving care and attention to detail. So if you're in the market for a new wand, check them out today. Again, that link is in the description. And now let's get to the video. So the first thing to start off with when talking about well, this topic, the fact that you can upgrade how many spell loadouts you have. So you'll see right in the line here in the core section of the talents, you get the first one, spell knowledge one, which gives you another, you know, it unlocks another one in your spell wheel or whatever. And then you have another one at level five, which is spell knowledge two, and a third one at spell knowledge three. And so if you unlock all three of those, you can have up to four spell wheel loadouts, which I think definitely makes the game a lot better and makes setting up the perfect spell combinations obviously way more possible. Outside of that, uh, my general recommendations for talents. I've done a video before talking about which which spells are the best ones to upgrade and therefore which talent points are the best ones to spend where. Uh, so if you want to find that, it's on the channel. But uh, my general recommendation is focus on the spells that you most heavily utilize and upgrade those ones uh, and avoid spells that kind of suck even if you got used to using them early. So with all that being said, if we have four slots for four sections, that means we can slot up to 16 spells at once. That being said, when you're in combat, it's if you get used to it, you can relatively easily switch between them, but it's best to kind of pair the ones that make the most sense together, right? And so there's a lot of different things to be considered out of all the spells, but in my opinion, this loadout that you see here on screen is the all-around best loadout that you can possibly rock for combat. Now, mind you, if you're going for a super dark arts perspective, I could see a very overpowered dark arts loadout that would look very different than this, but just as a general wizard, maybe someone who's maybe even good, as ridiculous as that may sound, then this is the way to go. That being said, two of the spells on here are rather late game spells, so I would understand if you're not used to using them or you haven't recognized their potential. But so, just to summarize, the spells that make up this wheel, on top we have Expelliarmus, which disarms wands and weapons from most enemies who wield them, also deals damage to all enemies, even if they do not carry a weapon. So this one is a great spell, it cooldown for it is pretty quick, it deals pretty dang high damage, and on top of that, it also disarms wizards, it makes their wand fly out of their hand, and disarms goblins, makes their physical weapon fly out of their hand. And with goblins, goblins it's even better, because then you can grab that weapon in midair with your ancient magic throw, and throw it back at them, or throw it at another enemy, and deal more damage. So Expelliarmus is one of the most useful spells just in general in the game, and no matter what, it always gets a slot in my loadout because of how incredibly useful it is. So that's why Expelliarmus is going to take that top spot in this loadout. I also recommend, for any good combat loadout that you never go solid damage or solid damage and uh, unforgivable curses or anything like that. If you do, you really limit your effectiveness in combat because of how easy it is to block you. You always want to make sure that you have at least one control spell and at least one force spell because the shields that you have to block are color coded. Some will be red and those can be broken by damage, but others will be yellow and then you need a control spell or purple and you'll need a force spell. The best control spell in the game without a doubt is transformation. There, I'll, and I'll talk about the other ones and how 
how useful they can be and in what circumstances. But transformation is the best. It takes the enemy entirely out of the fight for an extremely long amount of time, and just the base level it, of it turns them into a barrel or something like that, which then you can throw at someone and it takes care of the enemy that you transformed into a barrel and deals damage to the other one. But where transformation really shines is the talent that upgrades it. Because once you've unlocked that talent, it now turns them into explosive barrels. So instead of just turning them into a barrel, which you can throw at someone, you turn them into an explosive barrel, which will instant kill most enemies if you use your ancient magic throw on it then. So that makes transformation by far the best control spell in the game. It's not even close. Uh, so that is the one that I pair with my ultimate top tier loadout, which we're going over right now. Then as far as four spells, again, there is uh, there are arguments to be made for three of the, these. One of them is pretty stupid, and I don't generally care for it uh, in combat. It's really only useful as a utility spell. But Depulso is, in my opinion, by far the best four spell out of all the ones that are available, at least for combat. And so basically, it's just a giant kinetic push that you can blast people back. But it's incredibly useful because you can you can use this to throw, like, if you use it and you're standing behind a barrel, you can use it to then throw that into an enemy. You could throw the enemy into an explosive barrel or into a fire or something like that or throw them into a wall so they get damaged from the Depulso and from the thing that they hit. Or you can use it to ragdoll enemies off of cliffs and stuff like that, which I use all the time. So Depulso is really useful. The upgrade for Depulso is also pretty good. It causes a shockwave to go out from you, which will affect any enemies that are close to you. So Depulso is the best force spell in my opinion, and so that's why it takes this spot in this loadout. Then lastly, our bottom spell is Bombardo, which is just a ridiculously powerful explosive spell. The only reason I could see not using this one is because it is one of the last spells that you'll unlock in the game. So early game, you're not probably going to have access to Bombarda, and so then I would replace it with one of two other spells that we'll go over in the next loadout. Uh, but that being said, if you have it, I definitely recommend using it. It's very useful as a utility spell because it blows up obstacles and you can get rid of all starts and stuff with it, but it's also incredibly incredibly damaging in combat. It deals some of the highest single shot damage to your target, and on top of that also has area of effect damage for anyone close to it. So if you get three enemies close together and you target the center one with Bombarda, you might kill all three of them. So Bombarda is extremely useful and that's why these four spells make up my signature loadout. The only weakness of this loadout is we don't have any fire damage keyed into it, which is, like I said, why you want to have multiple loadouts available to yourself, but why you might also want to swap out Bombarda for something else, because you need fire damage damage against Infury. You have certain enemies like spiders who are also heavily affected by fire damage, but you don't need it against spiders. The only enemy in the game that you need fire against are Infury. So with that being said, this loadout, in my opinion, once you've unlocked these spells, is the absolute best combat, combat loadout you can get. You have no weaknesses, there's no shields that can stand against you. I should say you have one weakness and it's Infury, uh, but like I said, then for that instance, because they're not a very common enemy in the game, you can swap over to your secondary loadout, which you should have a fire damage spell, or you can use Ancient Magic against the Infury, because Ancient Magic also works against them. Or, if you're using Transformation, because this one, like I said, once you've upgraded Transformation, you can turn people into Explosive Barrels, Explosive Barrels will kill Infury. So, I should, I should erase that caveat. There are no weaknesses to this loadout. It's the perfect loadout. So that's my ultimate best loadout. But, in the circumstances that you're earlier game, so you don't have some of these spells, there are also really good early game versions. So this is another example of one that's a much earlier game loadout that is also pretty dang close to having no weaknesses. It's just a really good spell loadout. So our top spell, our high damage spell for this one is Defendo, which is one of the highest damage spells in the game. It competes with Bombarda, but it's an incredibly high effect, very high damage spell that you can also deal from really good range. It's got really high range, and it only gets better once you upgrade it, because then, as you should know, because Defendo is a slash attack, once you've upgraded it, that slash doesn't stop at the first target you hit. It passes through them and will damage enemies behind them. So Defendo's incredibly good. It's one that you unlock relatively early in the game, uh, and I think it makes a perfect power spell as an alternative to something like Expelliarmus or Bombard or something like that, because it does incredibly high damage. Then on this one, we have the uh, control spell of Levioso, which I would normally I'm not a huge fan of it once you've gotten uh, all of the other control spells, because I would rank Levioso at the worst of them. But it's not the worst if you pair it with Descendo as your force spell. So that's the alternative here, because is the best force spell, I would put Descendo as the second best force spell. Levioso is the worst control spell, but if you pair it with Descendo, it becomes one of the better ones, because Descendo deals incredible damage by smashing your enemy into the ground. But the higher the enemy uh, is up in the air, the better that is. So if you levitate someone using Levioso, and then you use Descendo on them, it's an instant kill 
kill on most mid-tier enemies. So all of your humans, your goblins, your spiders, all that sort of stuff. If you uh, levitate them first with Levioso and then use Descendo on them, almost always kill them in one hit. The only bad thing about both of these spells is neither one of them has a huge effect against large enemies like trolls. That being said, they will still be excellent at uh, taking out your colored shields. So purple will work great against your purple shields, or I should say Descendo will work against your purple shield, and Levioso will work against your yellow ones. So as a combination together, they're e excellent on their own. Uh, Descendo is still pretty good, but Levioso is not great. So if you don't plan on using them together, I would replace Levioso with obviously Transformation if you have it, but if not, Glacius is the next best control spell after Transformation, because Glacius is really good, and if you upgrade it, can deal incredible damage. The last spell on this one is Confringo, which is one of the single most useful spells in the game. It's a long range Firebolt, so it does a lot of damage on impact, and it can light people on fire, so they will keep taking damage. So it's great for that. It's obviously extremely strong against enemies like spiders who have a weakness to fire. It's great at taking out Inferi, who have to you have to use fire against them, fire or ancient magic. Uh, and like I said, as a general combative spell, it's very, very good. So Confringo is one that I always consider for a loadout, but especially before you've unlocked Bombarda, Confringo is the main bottom spell that I like to use. And then, like I said, for the top, I'll switch back and forth between uh, Defindo and Expelliarmus just for the extra utilities of each of them. So like I said, that first loadout I showed you is what I consider the ultimate top tier combat loadout end game though, because some of those are late game spells to unlock. This one is one that you should have these spells for the vast majority of the game. And so it's a relatively easy loadout to go with. The only caveat I have to this are that you could easily switch out your force and your control spells. And uh, so if you're doing this earlier game, it's very reasonable to have Glacius and Depulso as your spells on this one instead. Uh, the only reason I put Descendo and Levioso on here is because put together, they're extremely effective. So that's the second combat loadout I want to talk about. So this last uh, loadout is one that is basically your perfect dark arts loadout. So if you want to be a dark wizard and, uh, you know, be a real evil and sort of stuff, this one works the best for that. The only major weakness of this one is we're not able to slot any damage spells into it. I mean, you could if you wanted to impiece, uh, replace Imperio with Expelliarmus and then make sure you exp uh, upgrade Expelliarmus. That is an option. But other than that, we don't want to be weak against shields. We still want to have the ability fighting off shields. So maybe you, maybe you kind of have to put Expelliarmus instead of Imperio, even though Imperio is really useful for this one. So I'm, I'm going to do an on-the-fly change here because we still need to be effective against red shields, and so you need a red damage for that. Uh, what we're going for here with this Dark Arts loadout is the maximum curse effect against our enemies, so then we can finish them all off with Avada Kedavra. So once you've upgraded Avada Kedavra, it adds it so that not only do you kill the enemy that you cast this on, but any enemies around them with the cursed effect on them will also then instantaneously die. So we want all of our spells to be things that can be upgraded to then also add that cursed effect to them, and all three of these ones do. So obviously the cornerstone of this build is Avada Kedavra, which kills enemies instantly. And then like I said, on top of that, upgrading it so that it also kills your cursed enemies. Then on top of that, we can add in the uh, Arresto Momentum spell, which is a control spell, so this will give us power against enemies using a yellow shield, but once you've upgraded Arresto Momentum in the Dark Arts skill tree, it also adds the cursed effect to them. So this will give us that control, slow down our enemies, uh, break yellow shields, and adds a cursed effect. So that's why we add that one on there. Next up for our fourth spell, we've got the worst force spell in the game, which is Flipendo, which is kind of works in a similar way to uh, Accio in like the amount of time that it disables them slash puts them into the air. But other than that, Flipendo is pretty useless. That being said, it's one of the few, it's the only force spell as far as I know that has a upgrade to it that adds the cursed effect. So if you're going specifically for dark arts, you want to upgrade Flipendo in your dark arts skill tree or talent tree, I should say. And then once you have, it also curses enemies. So once again, just like we have with the rest of momentum, now we have a force spell. So we are strong against enemies that'll pop up a purple shell. It gives us more of that utility in combat where we can, you know, stop them from attacking us for a while. And it's one that will add that cursed effect. I was going to have Imperio for the last slot because Imperio is obviously very useful. It curses your enemy. So we, we are getting that cursed effect, but it also turns them against your other enemies. So that can be really useful. I like using it in particular against trolls because then you've got a troll on your side attacking your enemies. But then I changed my mind and put Expelliarmus here instead because A, we want to have a red spell on here for the enemies that will pop up your red shields because you do need that to break their shields. Uh, well, that or ancient magic or a ancient magic throw. And Expelliarmus is also extremely useful, obviously, since it disarms your enemy, so that makes it a crazy useful spell for any loadout. And it's one of the damage spells that once you upgrade it in your Dark Arts tree, it will add the cursed effect. So we want all of our spells here to add the cursed effect because that way it compounds on top of that and gives us the ability to kill all of them with Avada Kedavra.
Abracadabra. Those are your three core loadouts for spells, at least in combat. Like I said, what it really comes down to is a few things. You want to have a variety of spells so that you can take out any colored shield because you need to match it to the shield color for the spell if you want to break their shield. And you want to avoid spells that suck. So, like I said, just ranking wise for control spells, the best one is transform Transformation, then Glacius, then Arresto Momentum, then Levioso. The only exception to this is if you're pairing Levioso with Descendo. As far as our four spells are concerned, the best one is Depulso, then the next best one is Descendo, then Accio, and the worst one is Flipendo unless you're going for that Dark Arts build and then you can upgrade it to add the Cursed effect. As far as your damage uh, spells go, all of them are good except for Incendio. Incendio only makes sense to use early game when you don't have access to Confringo. Once you have access to Confringo, Incendio is totally useless and you should just forget it. Definitely don't waste a talent point upgrading it. Expelliarmus is useful because you can curse people with it, you can disarm people with it, and it deals crazy high damage. Bombarda deals crazy high damage and is great for clearing obstacles in the real world, or in the, the rest of the world I should say. Defendo is probably the single highest damage curse or spell you can use and once you upgraded it passes through enemies and makes it even more effective and like I said Confringo is just an incredibly useful spell throughout the entire game it's one of the best things against spiders and inferi and also works extremely well against all other enemy types as far as the unforgivable curses go this really only falls into effect if you're playing as a dark wizard Crucio is nearly useless it's got a cool spell cast animation but it doesn't do that much damage and it only incapacitates enemies for like a little while, less than control or force spells do on average. Uh, the only good thing about it is that it will add the cursed effect to your enemies, but really it's pretty useless. So I put it in the same thing as Incendio. I don't typically use it in combat because it doesn't do much. Imperio is great for controlling enemies because you can turn enemies against each other. Like I said, it's best if you can use it on a big strong enemy and that way they will take out their other com counterparts. Other than that, again, only upside to it is that it curses it. The only unforgivable curse that is actually super useful in battle is the Killing Curse of Atacadavra because it's an instant kill. And if you pair it with all of the spells that add the cursed effect and you've upgraded it so that you can automatically kill them, then it makes a huge difference. So those are my three key loadouts that I wanted to talk about today. But that is all there is to be said for the best spell combinations in this game. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you've got a spell combination that you think is better than anything I've shared in here, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. But in any case, that's all for today and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.